een uit drie vrouwen in Zuid-Afrika wordt misbruik. Hier die skokkende statistiek is deel van ons dagelijkse bestaan, toch besluit ons om niet sommer daar te praten. nie. Die rolprint Dis Ek Anna wil die sluier vir eens en vir altyd lig op hierdie belangrike kwestie. Hallo en welkom bij nog een episode van Bioskoop. Ek is die Theart. Die gelijknamige autobiografische roman Dis Ek Anna, geskryf dier Albi Lotter, het groot opspraak gemaakt met zijn vrijstelling in 2004. Dis hoog tyd dat nog meer mensen bewust wordt van Anna's story en besef dat het eigenlijk zoveel so andere Zuid-Afrikaners sy dagelijkse verhaal is. Dit is juist wat hierdie rolprint streef om te doen. Bioskoopse Marty Bester het met die rolprentse bekroende regisseer Sarah Bletcher gaan gesels. Sommer so gemakkelijk en onopgesmuk in Sarah's sitkamer. Daar is een stoel speciaal vir jou gereserveer. So kom sit gerus. What do you think the importance of this act Anna is for the movie guys out there, the public out there? You know, I mean, I, I, I definitely don't want to make the movie sound like it's hard to watch or like a f- work to watch, because I don't actually think it is. I think it's mm-hmm. quite also entertaining. Mm-hmm. But I think that the, the, the real purpose from our side was to, to make people understand what abuse does to a person, you know, what the consequences of abuse are on a person's whole life, really. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, really, that's what I would say. And I think that's where Mordenay Fiss's role yeah. as her stepfather was so very important. Yeah. And I mean, he delivers an amazing performance. Yeah. How did you manage to get that out of him, to, to, to bring that almost predator nature to the screen? You know, I think he did a lot of research by himself and obviously we talked about abuse a lot and we talked about the process of particularly men who abuse young girls because they groom the young girls. Um, You know, Ancien Trotsky, who's the writer of the book, when she watched the film, she wrote a message to Monet and she said, thank you for making these men look like the guy next door because that's what they look like. You know, they don't look like a monster. They don't have a big sign on their, on their forehead saying, I am an abuser. Mm-hmm. They, you see them outside in society, you see them around, and they're perfectly normal people. And then when the doors are shut, this is what they're doing. And I think that's something that we really worked on with, with, with Monet. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to not be this evil, horrible person that you hate all the time. It's just when the door is shut, suddenly the real you lives in that house behind those walls and, and this is what you you capable of doing because he is a very likable character yeah. when he is not you know trying to to take advantage of Anna yeah I mean he is someone that I can imagine someone would fall easily in love with absolutely this is your first for into Afrikaans movies yeah um, is it any different than English productions or yeah. yeah, no, it's very, it's very different. I mean, you know, all the other films that I've made have really been black films. Mm-hmm. You know, in the first film, Otello Burning, was Zulu. The second film was mostly Sutu with some Zulu mixed in. Um, so this is the first Afrikaans film that I've made. And the thing that was so astounding to me about working in, in, in making an Afrikaans film was that there's really an industry, you know, which Great is thing. an extraordinary thing. It, meaning that everyone that works on the film has got something else to go and work on next. So everybody is professional and everybody does their job and if everybody doesn't do their job, they're not being hired on the next production. I mean, it's a, it's a completely different part of the industry than, than, the, than what I'm used to working in. I mean, also it's completely, I mean, except for the, the rebates, it's unreliant on government, yes. which is an extraordinary thing. You know, I mean, it's, it's when you're making films that are so reliant on government, there are a lot of restrictions that, that come with that. And when you're free of that, it's quite, it's quite a liberation, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I guess the other part of that remains to be seen, but I think that Afrikaans audiences also really support Afrikaans films. 
So, you know, when you're making other films, you're making them and you know you're ultimately going to make them for these very tiny cinema audiences. So the whole time you're making the film, you're thinking, okay, well, mostly this film will be seen on TV or on VOD or, you know, so you have to think about the film that way. I think with Anna, it was absolutely, you know, you know that a lot of people are going to see this film in a cinema the way that it's supposed to be seen. And that was really exciting for me. Absolutely. I mean, it's really exciting to know that people will come and see the film and that you can actually, you know, even if it's just a little tiny thing, but you can change something with a film. Sure. You've already started um, you know, anti-sexual, the sexual abuse campaigns and so on. Do you think the film contributes in any way to starting a movement to to highlight these issues in society? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really hope it does. I, you know, I mean, that's that's why we're doing that, and that's mm -hmm. why, also, we fought so hard against the age restriction because I, I think one of the big problems with abuse, and you know, I mean, one in three women in South Africa are abused, okay. <laughs> and when you think about that statistic, you think about people in a squatter camp. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't think oh, yeah. about upper middle class Afrikaans families living in nice suburbs. And the reality is, it's everywhere. Absolutely. You know, it's in Jewish communities, it's in Indian communities, it's in African communities. It, it really, it crosses the board. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one of the big things in the Afrikaans community in particular is that the community is quite patriarchal and there's quite a very strong idea that children must be seen and not heard. And, and just, just that saying, children must be seen and not heard. Well we have to start listening to children. What I wanted to ask you specifically, I mean, with Anna, this act Anna, you were achieving a lot of success, and your other movie, Ayanda. And in both these movies, you give very strong voices to women. Why particularly? You know, I mean, the, the previous two movies I made were all about men and about manhood. I made a film called Otello Burning, which was, you know, a coming of age story about young boys. And then I made a documentary, a feature documentary called Surfing Soweto, which was literally looking at young boys in Soweto coming of age without fathers. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've been dying to do stories about women. I, I, I think there's such a lack of strong, interesting female characters. And I think that's because there's so few women directors and writers mm -hmm. in this industry. And then finally, touring the festival circuit. Uh, any news about this Ak Anna yet? Uh, international distribution perhaps? Well, we're or hoping for international distribution. Yes. I mean, we've got our first screening at, at the Edinburgh oh. African Motion Film Festival. So that will be next week. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I'm very excited to see how audiences respond to the film outside the country. Yes. Um, I know we, the film is also screening at the Palm Springs International Film Festival in America. So I think it will oh. travel. I think it will travel. I think, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what, what foreign audiences make of this film. Because I think Afrikaans films have a hard time traveling. Because I think, I mean, well, first of all, the, the, the comedies have a hard time because, I mean, obviously comedy doesn't really travel. But the other films too, and I think it's because people outside the country have such a preconceived idea of what they expect Afrikaners to be and how they expect those stories to fit in with apartheid. And when they see a story that isn't about apartheid and that is different than that, I think it's, I think it's, going, to be an interest, it's going to be interesting to see how it all works. I agree. I, I think I didn't even read what what Monet said yeah. at the Solar Scam Festival that you would actually really shift the landscape of Afrikaans movies, and I do believe you have with this. And I really like that you tackle the contemporary issue in such a way that there is absolutely, you know, there's no mention of race or apartheid. It is so refreshing. Mm. Um, so. Well done on that and, and congratulations. Thank you. Maar die waarskie aan haar essentie dat gehoor het definitief nie moet verwaag om gepaai te word nie, maar dat dis ek Anna een moed sien is. Sy was so beindruk dat sy die rolprint 5 sterre gegee het. As jy hou van wat jy so pas gesien het, klik geris hier om aan te sluit by ons bioskoop kanaal.
Vind so doen de heel eerste uit van al ons nietste video's. Je is ook natuurlijk baie welkom om hierdie video te like, commentaar te lever en met al jou vrienden op sociale media te deel. Tot de volgende keer, lekker fliek!